The La Sombra and Timizzi each individually earned their freedom from their elders and their antediluvians, but the Convention of Thorns threatened to take away all that they had earned through their shed blood and sacrifice. Although at first these former Anarchs waged a guerrilla-like war against their enemy, the Camarilla, they soon became outmaneuvered by the much more structured sect and were forced to admit that they lacked the cohesion and clear focus that would allow them to become a match for their enemy. As travel between cities at this time was an even worse ordeal than it would be today, few vampires were willing to leave the relative safety of their domain. This meant that the war between the sects was quite dissimilar to all other forms of conventional warfare of the time, instead sharing many similarities with the modern, cold warfare. By acting through puppets and proxies, the two factions struggled for dominance over cities and regions of Europe. And while the Sabbat lacked the political influence of the Camarilla, they had something that the Ivory Tower lacked, the Valdery. As the ritual of the Vinculum swept through the packs of the Sword of Cain, their loyalty to each other and to their cause strengthened as their bonds to the Elders shattered. Several powerful, prominent Cainites at the time, including Dominic Touraine of Ventru, Gortrix of Tremere, and Vasantasina of the Malkavian, joined the movement as well, bringing power, discipline, and skill to the fledgling sect that shored its defenses. Because of the extreme acts of violence and cruelty that the Cainites of the Sabbat embraced, not to mention their desire to distance themselves from the weak, humanity-loving Camarilla, the number of Sabbat vampires who succumbed to the Vassal, the Last Frenzy, and thus becoming whites, were rather high. Humanity and its moral codes were simply not suitable for the sort of Cain and its members, and thus a great undertaking was set to adapt and adjust the older roads of morality into something new and applicable, a way to hone one's inhumanity without succumbing to the beast. The results of this research were the paths of enlightenment. Not dissimilar from the previous roads, these new alien codes of morality allowed those Cainites truly dedicated to their cause to find new meaning to their undead existence, shedding their old humanity like a butterfly shedding its cocoon. There were a few dissenting voices against these paths, arguing that their origins were murky at best, reinterpretations of antediluvian thought processes at worst. Still, the amount of Cainites who wanted to stave off the beast vastly outnumbered these doomsayers, and thus many of the paths that are still used today were created. While the Sabbat remained powerful in some parts of Europe, in particular Scandinavia, Eastern Europe and Spain, the steadily growing kingdoms of the kind were mostly under Camarilla influence, and the Sabbat began to look west for new lands to conquer. They did so, hoping that in so doing they would amass enough power to once again challenge the Camarilla in their own game. While the Sabbat fared well initially, the Camarilla were soon to follow, and the Sword of Cain were forced to move their activities to the frontiers, where their guerrilla-like warfare was the most successful. Influential port cities were lost to the Ivory Tower time and time again, although the Sabbat fared much better in Mexico and Latin America, where what was to become Mexico City became their domain from the very beginning that the Spanish set foot there. The New World was rife with mortal conflict, and wherever the kind fought each other, the Sabbat partook in the slaughter. Then came the First Civil War. In the very end of the 18th century, the La Sombra and Simizzi began a conflict amongst each other over who would rule over the limited resources of the Sabbat-controlled domains of the Americas. Pressured by the encroaching Camarilla and forced to the frontier, the situation was becoming dire, until finally a concord was reached through the so-called Purchase Pact, named after the mortal president of the fledgling United States land purchase from the French, the Louisiana Purchase. It was, however, too late, and while the Sabbat had found peace within itself once more, nearly 30 years of hard work had come undone in but a few years. The Camarilla had gained the upper hand in the United States, and the frontier advantage of the Sabbat was quickly lost. The Purchase Pact essentially allowed the sect to declare a blood hunt on any Cainite who put his or her own interest ahead of the sects, by outmaneuvering or damaging another member of the Sabbat. This was a milestone in Sabbat history. Before this, no Sabbat Cainite could impose a rule upon another. Every member was free to pursue whatever interested them, but following this pact, the Code of Milan soon became the de facto law of the Sabbat, with some notable exceptions. Latin America, for example, remained fairly isolated from the rest of the movement, and the Purchase Pact left little impact upon the Cainites waging their war against the ancients there. 
The Code of Milan, more than the Purchase Pact, found resonance amongst the Canines of the Sabbat. Originally penned much earlier in the sect's history by Archbishop Gian Galeazzo, it soon became a foundation for the future crusade of the sect. The Sabbat shall remain united in its support of the sect's regent. If necessary, a new regent shall be elected. The regent shall support relief from tyranny, granting all Sabbat freedom. All Sabbat shall do their best to serve their leaders, as long as said leaders serve the will of the regent. All Sabbat shall faithfully observe all the Auctoritas Rite. All Sabbat shall keep their word of honor to one another. All Sabbat shall treat their peers fairly and equally, upholding the strength and unity of the Sabbat. If necessary, they shall provide for the needs of their brethren. All Sabbat must put the good of the sect before their own personal needs, despite all costs. Those who are not honorable under this code will be considered less than equal and therefore unworthy of assistance. As it has always been, so it shall always be. The Lextalionis shall be the model for immortal justice by which all Sabbat shall abide. All Sabbat shall protect one another from the enemies of the sect. Personal enemies shall remain personal responsibility unless they undermine sect security. All sect members shall protect Sabbat territory from all other powers. The spirit of freedom shall be the fundamental principle of the sect. All Sabbat shall expect and demand freedom from their leaders. The Ritas of Monomacy shall be used to settle disputes amongst all Sabbat. All Sabbat shall support the Black Hand. While the Sabbat had been pushed away from the United States, they had ensconced themselves within Canada and Mexico, the bordering nations. There they essentially prohibited further expansion in either direction, funneling the Camarilla and their kind servants ever westwards. Unfortunately, little could be done with this trap-like encircling, as the Sabbat once more succumbed to a civil war in the mid-19th century. It is commonly believed to have been started with the assassination of the regent Gorkist by a Ravnos Antitribu in Mexico City in 1863. Mexico was quickly drowned in kindred and kind blood as the fight caused untold havoc to the nation. The fighting in Canada was not as fierce, but as the Tsimitsi realized Canadian La Sombra sent aid to Mexico, it erupted there as well. The conflict continued through the Great War, and while it was certainly bloody, the attention of the kind was thankfully focused on the conflicts of Europe. In 1933, the civil war within the Sabbat had raged for long enough, and a peace gathering was called in New York City. The Sabbat at this point had lost large portions of their Canadian domains to the Camarilla, and their forces had been decimated. Attended by over 50 witnesses, a revised Code of Milan was put forth at the summit, and it was quickly ratified, becoming more or less the law of the Sabbat. All Sabbat have the right to monitor the behavior and activities of their fellow sect members in order to maintain freedom and security. All Sabbat possess the right to call a council of their peers and their immediate leaders. All Sabbat shall act against sect members who use the power and authority the Sabbat has given them for personal gain at the expense of the Sabbat. Action shall be taken only through accepted means, approved by the Quorum of Priski. For a time, peace was regained within the Sabbat, but it lasted only until 1957, where the third, but thankfully short, civil war broke out. A coup was attempted in New York, ignited by the Bruya Anti Tribu, but it was quickly beaten down. This, however, turned the clan against the Sabbat leadership, and they were aided by the sizable number of caitiff found in the Sabbat, led by a man named Joseph Pander. The solution came quick, however, as the Sabbat, in a stroke of diplomatic genius, named the Kaitifa clan in its own right, the Panders, and thus ended the conflict almost before it broke out. It is difficult to say with any certainty if the Sabbat would have led claim to more of the American continent had they refrained from their infighting, but one thing is for certain. Without the guidance of the La Sombra, the Sword of Cain would never have survived to this day, nor would it have been such a threat to the Camarilla. In my next video, I will be discussing the history of Clan La Sombra, the Keepers, the strategists and politicians of the Sabbat. We would like to welcome Maximilian S. Hardcastle to the Primogen Council. May his wisdom and experience help guide our decisions. The Primogen Council sends its best wishes to the elder Dante the Canine for his loyalty and service to its cause, and would also like to thank the Ancillae Edward Reed, Colin Gifford and Harry Wyckoff, as well as his loyal neonates for their continued support. And thank you for watching. Now be careful out there, for Gehenna may soon be upon us.